Hey guys, it's me Kevin and welcome back to my yearly AFL ladder predictions video. As we approach the 2024 season, a sense of optimism fills almost every fan that their club can make finals or win a premiership. And in today's video, I'm going to be going through which teams I think will make the eight and where I think each team is going to perform this year. Now, I'm going to do my predictions a little bit different in this video today so that, so that I don't end up with a similar ladder like last year's. Rather than going from 18th to 1st, I'm going to set a framework with a series of questions which I must adhere to in order to make some bold ladder predictions. Here is the framework I'm going to be operating off today. I must predict three teams from last year's top eight to miss the finals. One of them must be a preliminary finalist and the other two must be either the semi or elimination finalists. Of those teams I'm predicting to miss the eight from last year's top eight, one must finish bottom four. Then I must predict three teams that missed the finals from last year to make the finals. One of them must come from the bottom four and one of those three teams I must predict to make the top four. Now, Let's start with answering probably the easiest of these questions. Which bottom four team will make the finals? There's an obvious one there, the Gold Coast Suns. They've got Damien Hardwick coaching them now. They've just come off an excellent draft haul. And the core group of players which they um, have got for a while, Raul, Anderson, Keyes, Miller, you know, they've all gotten used to the AFL system and I think they're ready to take off. You know, their performances weren't that bad last year. They had some impressive wins against the Bulldogs, Adelaide Saints and Brisbane. They're starting to make Metricon a little bit of a um, fortress. I think there's signs that they could be becoming increasingly hard to beat there. And the AFL really, really want the Suns to make finals this year. They have been given the Eagles, North and Hawthorne each to play twice. And those are the three teams which are widely tipped to be in the, bot the worst teams going into this year. So the Suns have got a very easy fixture. With Damien Harwick coaching the Suns, surely, surely this is the year they make finals. If not now, when? Now, which other non-finalist could make the eight? One which I think is plain obvious is the Western Bulldogs. There is no way this side's missing finals again. I don't know what happened last year, but when you've got players such as Bontempelli, McRae, Trelaw, uh, Libertore, etc., English in your ruck, you've got Norton... Um, Yamari Eagle Hagen, I mean, he's only getting better and better. There is absolutely zero way this side is missing finals again. The other team, which I'm a little bit hesitant about, but I'm going to put him in, and I'm going to say they're going to make the top four, is the Adelaide Crows. Now, I'm a bit hesitant about this one because they are still an extremely young side. And are they too reliant on Tex Walker as well as Lamb and Dawson? Uh, and their back line is a little bit questionable. So I am, I do have a bit of reservations about this prediction. Uh, however, um, I do think, looking last year, their best football was very much finals worthy. It, they played an exciting brand of football, and they're, very, uh, they're a very high-scoring team, which, generally speaking, tends to lead teams to higher finishing positions. Just look at Brisbane over the last few years. I think also the Crows, they've got a very strong record at Adelaide Oval. It's going to be very hard to beat them there. Don't, and also, all these players are going to get a year older and they are going to get more experienced. And there's just this thing, when you get heartbroken in the finals, either in the finals or you just miss out finals by absolutely nothing, you tend to improve the next year. Look at Carlton in 22, Freer the year before, and then also Melbourne in 2017. And all three of those teams went on to finish much better um, Frio, Melbourne, Fifth, and Carlton. I think Adelaide could sneak into the top four um, based on that. One team I considered at length as well was Geelong. They've got a fairly mild fixture. The, the highest ranked team they play from last year is Carlton. And they also get double ups against Hawthorne and North. And, you know, they've, got a, they've still got a strong record at GMHBA Stadium. And... If they can keep all their veterans fit and firing, I reckon Geelong could easily make the top four, to be honest with you. I still think they're capable of doing it, but I just think if injuries strike again, uh, Geelong are a little bit vulnerable. Now, the part of the video which is going to piss everybody off. Which of last year's finalists are going to miss the finals this year? One big slider I've got is Melbourne, mainly due to all the cultural issues they have got. 
They have had the off-season from hell last year, right? They had Joel Smith provisionally suspended due to drugs. Clay and Oliver being Clay and Oliver. I don't even know what's going on there. Um, Angus Brayshaw has now retired, leaving a big gap in the defence. And their forward is an absolute disaster. I don't think they've got Melksham for the season. And I think Petty is going to be out for stages as well. So, yeah, a lot of issues facing Melbourne. They don't stand up during crisis, this team. Um, they went out in straight sets in 2022 and 2023. Not to forget that they finished 17th in 2019 after their injury-riddled preseason. And I think Melbourne could be crashing for another bottom four finish. Another team which I think they're just a bit bland is Port Adelaide. Um, one of the big things with Port Adelaide is they are very inconsistent from season to season. Sometimes they look like they're the best team in the competition, and then other times they just miss the finals altogether. And that's been a pattern for the last few years. And I feel like with Ken Hinckley, given that he's in the middle of a contract, there's going to be less pressure on him compared to last year. And we see when there's less pressure on Ken Hinckley, Port Adelaide don't perform. When Hinckley's about to get the sack, they perform. So this is the middle of a contract year for Hinckley. And so I think Port will miss the finals, although they'll be in finals contention for the most of the year. Um, but the other reasons I've got is they looked very vulnerable at stages last year, particularly towards the end of the season where they lost uh, six out of their last nine games. They have got recruitments, but Sweet, Zerk, Thatcher and Soldo, okay, they're okay players, but I don't know if they're going to quite fix what Port Adelaide, if they're going to fix everything for Port Adelaide. So does that mean I think St Kilda will back up their finals appearance from last year? Yes. I think they're going to improve this year because, to be honest, with all the injuries they had in their forward line and the injury to Jack Steele, I don't know how Saints made the finals, but they somehow did. And I think if they can get a full season under Max King, if they can get a full season under Jack Steele, and if they can get their forward line fit and firing, there is no reason why St Kilda can't back up their finals appearance or even improve on 2023. Furthermore, they have also got a very easy fixture. They get to play Essendon, Richmond, and West Coast twice. They do have to play Brisbane and Port, admittedly. Um, but I think, surely, if they made finals last year, things are looking a lot more positive for the Saints. Now, if I'm certain about one thing, one of Collingwood, Brisbane, Carlton, or GWS is missing the finals this year. Because for the last 10 years, one preliminary finalist has gone on to miss the finals. But the question is, which one? I think Brisbane's safe as houses. They only lost the grand final by four points last year. And the, the teams that missed the finals after making the grand final, those are generally the ones that get embarrassed by 60, 70, 80 points. Not Brisbane, who lost by four points. They're safe. I can't see Collingwood missing the finals either. Um, I think Craig McRae will get this side up and going again. I don't think there's any issues there either. And I think, look... I think GWS are looking like a really good side this year. They're my premiership tip, actually. So that leaves us with Carlton. And yes, I know, it's a big call. Carlton missing finals? Well, I, I guess there is a logical explanation I could give behind Carlton missing finals. Can they handle the hype? Okay? And to be honest, we haven't really seen Carlton win, lose, win, lose, like kind of lose a little bit and then win a few games again. Um, in the last few years. Last year, they had a big losing streak. They played Gold Coast and Hawthorne just to get their confidence up a bit, and then they went bang and went on a nine-game winning streak. So how does Carlton handle losing games here and there? We don't know. Can they handle the hype? Can they handle a more difficult fixture? Will they be like Melbourne of 2019, who, after making the finals and everyone hyping Melbourne to win their first premiership in 54 years, you know, fell all the way to 17th? I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I still think Carlton will make finals, but for the purposes of adhering to this structure that I talked about earlier, I'm going to say they finish bottom six. Just, I, I, to be honest, they might collapse due to all the hype. All right, so now let's fill in the gaps. In 18th spot, has to be West Coast. I mean, the injury crisis has started again. We haven't even started the year yet. I mean, they've already got players such as Flynn, Jimby... Long, um, Hewitt, uh, Brockman, I don't, McGovern, just 
We're going to have a waffle team by round three again, the way we're going. Yeah, I think the Eagles, their injury crisis is going to happen again, and they're going to finish last again. And I think things are going to get even worse for this club. And for me, unfortunately. I've got Essendon in 17th. I know this is a big drop-off, and everyone is thinking that this is a chance for them to make finals with all the reinforcements that they've made in the offseason. But look at the fixture. They have got Adelaide, Collingwood, Sydney, St Kilda. And if I'm correct that Gold Coast are going to be a big improvement this year, them too. Though they do get to play the Eagles twice. So I, it may be. It might even out. But I think Essendon, they looked very poor against um, St Kilda. I know it's a practice game. But also just the way they finished last year is very concerning. And I think Essendon, they could be in for a huge Fall this year. And then I've got North Melbourne in 16th. Surely after four years in the bottom two, they at least get out of that and finish 16th. And after that, hopefully they avoid finishing bottom four from this point onwards. I think they've recruited well, um, they've drafted extremely well, and surely they might be a little bit more competitive this year. And then as I said, Melbourne in 15th due to all the on-field crises they're going to have. 14th, I'm going to put Richmond. I I don't know what to make of Richmond. I actually... Th I, I can see them doing a GWS of this year, getting all their veterans uh, to play well and making finals. But at the same time, what if injuries strike? And I think Richmond are one of the most vulnerable teams uh, to injury. So for that reason, I can't put him higher than 14th. But for all the people saying that they're going to be bottom four, I, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit more positive about the Tigers compared to many. In 13th spot, I've got Frio. Look, I th the Dockers will be competitive. They'll compete for finals for half the year, but I just don't quite rate them compared to the teams above them, and I think they'll fall away later in the year. And then in 12th spot, I've got Hawthorne. I think they'll be one of the sharp risers. I think they'll be similar to um, Adelaide of 2023. I think Hawthorne, they will surprise many, but they will miss the finals. But I think they'll make finals in a couple years. And then 11th spot, I've got Carlton, one of the big sliders, um, as I mentioned earlier. I've got Geelong in 10th. I think they'll be around the mark, but they will just miss the finals. And likewise with Port Adelaide, um, I do think they're still good. They're still a decent team. I mean, if things go well, they could still make top four. But I have to predict three teams to slide out of the eight, and I think Port Adelaide will be one of those three teams. I still don't trust the Bulldogs as a legitimate premiership contender, so I'm going to put him in 8th. I think Sydney in 7th, I think um, injury is going to take a toll on the Swans. They've already got two major ones to Mills and Parker. Their defence is still questionable, and they've also got some tricky double-ups against teams such as Adelaide, Collingwood, GWS, and the Western Bulldogs. Um, so, yeah, I think Sydney in 7th. Gold Coast in 6th because of the fairy tale that they'll play their first ever final on the Gold Coast. Um, in fifth, I've got Brisbane because they have got a very difficult fixture. Uh, if it was any other team other than Brisbane, I would have them missing the finals. They've got double ups against teams such as Adelaide, Collingwood, Giants, St Kilda, as well as Melbourne and Gold Coast, which you don't know what to expect with those. So I think Brisbane are going to take a slight dip outside of the top four. I think in fourth, I'm going to put St Kilda. In my opinion, if they made the finals in 2023 with a much better off season. They should improve in 2024. In third spot, I've got Collingwood. They just won a premiership. They're not going anywhere. Second spot, I'm putting Adelaide. To be honest, more so just so a team loses a home qualifying final. And in top spot, I've got GWS. I think they are going to have a very impressive year. I mean, they're going to keep up the orange tsunami. And I think with one of the best midfields in the competition... And one of the best well-rounded lists, I think GWS could be in for a big, big year. As for finals, I've got GWS beating St Kilda, and as I said, Collingwood beating Adelaide in the qualifying final. I have then got Brisbane beating the Bulldogs and Gold Coast beating Sydney. In the semi-finals, I have St Kilda going out in straight sets and Brisbane making a preliminary final. However, I've got Adelaide keeping their fairy tale alive beating the Gold Coast Suns and ending their own fairy tale. And then in the preliminary finals, I would have GWS playing Brisbane and the Giants would win that. And Collingwood and Brisbane in the grand final rematch and I would have Collingwood winning that. And then Giants and Collingwood, at what well, should be it at a core stadium, but we're going to have it at the MCG because it's always at the MCG. 
Um, I've got the Giants winning their first ever AFL Premiership. And what about for the medals? For the Brownlow medal, I am predicting Nick Dacos. He came very close to winning it last year. He would have won it if it wasn't for injury. And I think if he has another fit season, I think he will easily win it this year. Uh, Coleman medal, I'm not so convinced about. But if I said Adelaide are going to make the top two, I guess Taylor Walker has to be um, a part of it. And he'll win the Coleman, um, if that's the case. As for the Rising Star, I don't have Harley Reid, even though I want him to win it as an Eagles fan, but um, I just don't have a good feeling about him. Instead, I'm going to put Riley Sanders. Um, just an arbitrary one. I think he could uh, have a very good season, and I'll predict him to win the Rising Star Award. And for the Norm Smith, I'm going to predict Tom Green to have a best of field performance in the grand final. So, I hope you like my bold AFL ladder predictions. And yes, I made them bold. Because if I'm sure about one thing, my predictions might not be correct, but the sort of categories that I try to go for in, in, in shifting them around, that I'm sure will happen this year. I just don't know which teams are going to switch around. And that's the fun of this. We've got to predict which teams switch around. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Comment what you thought of my video down below and comment who you think will make the top eight and what you think the ladder will look like. Uh, check out some of my other videos and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.